I want to speak to you this morning about vision. Amen? We've been on the theme of next level. Amen? Uh, in the ministry, in the church. But when you hear me, when you hear me say, yes, let me dismiss the, the youth. I'm sorry. When you hear me use the word vision today, I don't mean vision in the ministry. Okay? I need you to understand this. I don't mean vision in the ministry like, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. We could use a Sunday school teacher. We could use a men's. You know, there, we have, there's ministry available. Right? If you want to. But the vision that I want to speak to you about is the vision that God has given you that you're afraid of. Mm, yeah. Right? The vision that God has given you that you're afraid of. That's, that's, that's the vision that I'm speaking to you about this morning. Because it's important to understand that God gives us vision, listen to this, to draw out of us things that we don't even know we have. No, that's right. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go out on the limb and say this. There were things drawn out of Sylvester earlier this week mm -hmm. that he didn't even know he had. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Follow me here. And sometimes God has to place us in a position in order to extract something that's on the inside of us that we don't even know exists. Mm -hmm. Follow me here. And sometimes God gives us a vision like starting a company, like doing something you've never done, like going back to school, like, you, you see where I'm going with this? He gives us a vision because he knows that there's something way deep down in here that you can do, but you won't do it. And the only way you'll do it is if you allow him to get going. Yeah. Think of this. I got this out of a book that I read I went uh, called Visionary from Andy Stanley. When we started to plant the church, I, we went through this book. December the 17th of 1903, at exactly 10.35 a.m., Orville Wright and his brother, Wilbur, secured their place in history. Listen to this. Secured their place in history by executing the first powered and sustained flight off a level ground. For 12 gratifying seconds, they flew 120 feet. Right? And because of that, do you know there's over 275,000 flights daily? But it began because one man or two boys had vision. 19, I mean, listen to this, 1978, 1878, I'm sorry, Wilbur and Orville's father, he comes home with a gift concealed in his hands. And he walks into the living room and he goes, and he launches a little helicopter. Made out of wood and bamboo and rubber bands and a few screws. Rubber bands twisted together, created the propelling and all this good stuff. The helicopter soars through the living room, hits the wall, falls to the ground, shatters in pieces. 
The brother sons are sitting there. Witnessing the broken toy. They could have sat there and cried like babies. But guess what happened instead? Something rose up on the inside of them. And they began to say, I think we can fly. I know we can fly. I think we should fly. And guess what? I'm going to fly. And we know them as the Wright brothers. Because they had vision to fly. There are times that as men and women of God, He gives us visions to fly, but we don't. We begin to calculate the things that are against me versus the things that are for me. And I believe that there is a spirit of entrepreneurship. I believe there is a spirit of success and prosperity. I believe there is a spirit of taking it to the next level. But it begins with a vision and a desire to fulfill the vision. And I'll say it again like I said it last week. If it ain't crazy, it ain't God. Start the company. Reapply for the job. Go to school again. Do something you've never done before. Want to be a doctor? You want to be a lawyer? You want to be an airplane pilot? You want to listen? I'm not. I know we can sell vocals and we can sell watermelons and we can do. No, I'm talking about doing something that I thought I could never do. Because this is the God on whom I serve, and He says with me, all things are possible. Don't limit yourself to the things of the natural world because we serve a God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and all it takes is for you to make the first step. Amen? What did I say last week? What is courage? Courage is something that rises up on the inside of us. That's something that rose up on the inside of those boys right there. It rose up on them. And it, 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 it uh, what did I say? Uh, courage pushes us past our problems, right? Well, courage pushes us past the things that we don't think we can uh, overcome or the things that we... And, but look at this. It provokes potential. Amen? This is what vision and courage, you wrap them together. It's like wrapping bacon on a jalapeno. It just gets that much better. Amen? And when you wrap courage around vision, I'm here to tell you, man, God will begin to move on your behalf. Doors will begin to open. And guess what? People will begin to get out of your life. Don't be mad when the Lord begins to separate you because he got a plan for you. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Don't be mad when he begins to put you over here because there's something that he has for you. And sometimes we get lonely and we think God is mad at us. But no, it's because God has a plan right. for you. Right. Amen? Courage has to rise up on the inside of you. Courage has to push you past your problem. It has to provoke potential. Look at this. Potential means this. That there is an existing possibility. That there is an existing possibility capable of developing something and making it real. Don't curse yourself. Yeah. With small thinking. Mm -hmm. Share a little testimony. September of 2003, I got out, right? When I got out of prison, they sent me to a sociology class the, the, the Friday before. Because I had been gone almost 12 years, right? And, 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 they, and they, they were like making sure that, I, you know, I had to, I was going, they were going to get me back in tune with the world. Mm -hmm. And you know what they offered me? They offered me a uh, hundred and twenty dollars a month food stamps for six months, free. All I had to do was show up at the food stamp place and tell them, "Look, I just got out of prison and I need my food stamps." Amen. But I'm here to tell you, friends, as a testimony, I refused a hundred and twenty dollars worth of food stamps because I was not going to 
come on, the God I serve told me, when you get out, I'm going to provide for you. You give me everything you got. I'm going to turn your world upside down. Don't curse yourself with them food stamps. I tell my wife the other day, I was sitting on the couch. I said, you know what, Mama? I'm glad I didn't take them food stamps because I want to curse myself. I don't need no help. I serve the God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm going to curse myself. He did it right the first time, like Sylvester said. Amen? Amen? Don't curse yourself with small thinking. Don't belittle what God has done for you or what God will do for you. How many people are stuck because they don't? How many kids, how many children, how many boys and girls have dreams yeah. of being doctors, of being lawyers, of being chemists, of being all these other things, but they limit themselves? Yeah. That's not what we preach. Mm -hmm. We preach that God gives us vision. And he gives us vision to do what we don't think we can do. Mm -hmm. what do you, how many times do you hear me say, what is my job? My job as your pastor is to take you places you don't think you can go, man. Pull out of you things that you don't even know you have, man. Vision is born. Listen, when is vision born? When you get tired, man. And you're consumed with what is. Consumed with what is. But overtaken by what it can be. Tweet that. <laughs> Consumed by what it is. But overtaken by, by what it can be. That's vision. I see it, Pastor. I see it, Brother Junior. I see it, man. Can I tell you this? If you can see it, you can be it. Yeah. Vision is what catapults one to say... I think I can fly. I want to fly. I should fly. Better said, I will fly. Amen? Amen. That's vision. Amen. Wrapped with courage. Oh, but look at him. Mm, wrap all that when God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here it is. You got to start. You have to start. I was talking to Brother Hector this morning because they don't get to hit, sit in on the message. I, I kind of gave him a little rundown of what I was going to be ministering on. And the thing I told him is, you know what God gives us a vision? You know what's your next responsibility? Investigate it. Where do I go, Lord? Send me the right person. Put me in connection with who I need to be with. Open the door for me, Lord. How much is it going to cost to get this started? What am I going to need to get this started? Lord, bring those that I need and take those that are in the way. Amen. Come on. When you begin to investigate it here, yeah, listen, you activate the hand of God. Yes. You move, you literally move the hand of God when you begin to investigate. Mm -hmm. This is what it takes, friends. Right? This is what it takes for us to get going. I want to fly. I can fly, and I will fly. I'm talking, friends, a next level vision for your life. Okay. Not only for the church. Because when God begins to work in your life, on a personal level, it trickles mm -hmm. to the church. Yeah. See, we got too many pastors trying to build churches and not people. Yeah. Probably get in trouble for this one. <laughs> We're not trying to preach as my wife said to get a reaction. No. We're trying to get some change in people. Because we serve the God that says, if I'm for you, who or what can be against you? Amen? Amen. We're not trying to build churches. We're trying to build soldiers. We're trying to build men and women that are going to influence the next community. That's going to work at the hospitals. That are going to work in the police departments. That's going to work as firemen. That are going to work as chemists. They're going to be lawyers. They're going to be. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm talking about. Amen? I'm not 
concerned about the service that you had on Sunday morning? Were you changed when you left there? Did you make a difference in your community? Is your family on the right road? Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Pastor Penny said, but did you die? <laughs> right? No. Here's my thing. But are you changed? Mm -hmm. Amen? You come Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday after, are you changed? Because if you're not changed, we... we, we Leave it alone. Okay. Next level vision that will trickle to the church. So 2021 Hattiesville Community Church, let us be a church filled with vision for our lives, for our children's lives, for our community's lives. Let us be a men and women of vision spilling over into the community, spilling over into the world. Well, that's yeah, easy for you to say, Pastor. It's easy, Pastor. Sounds good. Up there, preaching confidence to us and encouragement and faith. Sounds good, Pastor. Well, say it with me. This year. Now, God gave you a vision, right? Just think about it. Every one of us in here got a vision from God. Whether it's whether it's just to ask for forgiveness, whether it's to have a little more faith, whether it's to be a better uh, church attender, whether it's to be uh, uh, more generous, whatever, whatever it is, we all have something from God that he deals with, right? Now, I ain't going to ask you to say that, but I do want you to say, that, say when you get to the last part, you, you just say it in your mind, okay? 2021. Follow me. Follow me. 2021. I will, I will do this. Do this. 2021, 2021. I, will I will do this. Do this. 2021, 2021. I, will I will do this. Do this. Thank you. The Bible says, as a man thinking, yeah. so is he. That's right. It's easy for you to say, Pastor, but because I think it, so I am. Mm -hmm. So from now on, in 2021, whatever the Lord has put into your spirit, you say it when you wake up in the morning. In 2021, I will do this. I will do this. I will find out what it takes to do this. I will sign that paper. I will go to that school. Amen? Yeah. As a man thinking, so is he. Yeah. Amen? Right. Look at here. If you believe you can't, you won't. That's it. You lost. Game over. Y'all stole. No more. If you believe you can't, you won't. Right? Because as a man thinking, yeah. so is he. <coughs> Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no revelation slash vision, the people cast off restraint or the people perish. Okay. Follow me. The people perish. But here it is. Where there is no revelation, the King James says. Right? Follow me here. Everybody quotes this scripture. But there's no vision the people perish. No. King James says revelation. That means God has given you something. Follow me here. God has given you a dream. God has given you a desire. God has given you something. And, and he says, look, look what the Bible says. It says, where there is no revelation from God, it says the people cast off restraint. Now, there is nothing... More critical than an unrestrained individual. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the church term for unrestrained. James says, uh, like the wind tossed to and fro. Mm -hmm. He uses the word double-minded. Where there is no vision, the people are double-minded. Right? That means they're going in two different directions. Mm -hmm. 
Amen? You know what I call them? I'm going to get in trouble again. <laughs> Church hoppers. Where there is no vision, yeah. the people cast off restraint. That means there's no order in their life. That means they're going here, and they're going here, they're going there, and they're going here, but there's nothing of stability. And James says, you're double-minded. Amen? It means you're running in opposite directions, church. And as men and women of God, if anybody is going to demonstrate any stability, it should be the church. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Martin Luther King said it best. Faith is moving or taking the step without seeing the staircase. You can't see it now, but you have to move. An unrestrained person, listen to this, is one running wall. Wow. Running in opposite directions. Double-minded, unstable in all our ways. Unstable, uncertain, full of faith on Sunday. Ooh, come Monday. <laughs> I wrote Madman on Monday. <laughs> Go to Judges. I got some scripture for you. I ain't, I'm done just speaking. I have some scripture for you. Judges, real quick. I'm going to get out of your way. Matter of fact, you don't have to turn to it. Let me read the scripture. Judges 6, verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abyssalite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us. Oh, come on now. Woo! Mm -hmm. Oh, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are his miracles which our, fa our fathers told us about? Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken and delivered us into the hands of the Midianite. Verse 14. The, then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? 15. So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites. Here's the key thing in that scripture, as one man. Wow. And here's what I want to extract from that story before I leave out of here. Mighty man of valor. Gideon finds himself in the wine press hiding from the Midianites because he's scared. He's uncertain. And if we study the scripture, the Midianites were a band of thieves and robbers that would come and would just take their stuff. And he finds himself in there, and let me tell you something, in his weakest moments, when he was discouraged and frustrated, not understanding, because he asked the question, well, Lord, if you're with me, why does this keep happening? Right. Amen? That sounds like some ordinary, scared individual to me. Yeah. Well, Lord, I done gave you all my money. <laughs> Lord, I'm there every Sunday. I'm there every Wednesday. I log on all the time, Lord. But why does this keep happening to me? And guess what the Lord told him? A mighty man of valor. He didn't call him, oh, you old yellow belly, all that good. He didn't call him a bunch of names, you know, all you scaredy cat. He didn't call him all that. You know why? Have you thought about why? Because he wasn't calling him what he was. He was calling him what he was going to be. Yeah. See, God knew that he was a mighty man of valor. In a tough spot. And sometimes we're just in tough spots. It doesn't negate the fact that I'm a mighty man of valor. 
See, you need somebody needs to get this today. Just because your position is tough doesn't mean you're. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're not a mighty man of valor. But he's hiding, Pastor. I know he's hiding. I used to hide too. Never took the fact that I'm, I was a mighty man of valor. Go look into this. Valor is a divine gift. Not everybody can do what you do, Pastor. Sit up there and preach that you blue in the face. Can't nobody fight like you, Pastor. Can't nobody talk the way you talk. Do what you do. Give what you give. You know what I know? I've always had that. I just didn't always use that. Listen to this. Because Viola is a divine gift from God that has been given to me from the very beginning. Grace said it when she preached. When she talked her little message about, I knew you before you was formed in your mother's womb. I knew you. I set you apart. I appointed you as a priest to the nations, a prophet to the nations. The, the, the valor is always in here. Yeah. Listen to this. It's a divine gift. Listen to this. But it's developed by the divine presence of God. Because he told them, you go, you sign up, you, you go over there and watch me. I'm going to be with you. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, you don't have to listen. All you got to do is just be there. Mm -hmm. Man, how we get the easy part. All we got to do is show up. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. A divine, listen, a divine gift developed by the divine presence. Look, verse 16, and the Lord said to him, surely I'm going to be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. I don't even need the church. I'm going to come in there by myself, kicking the door down. I'm going to set the stage when I get there because there's a divine presence with us. Friends, God was not calling Gideon what he was, but what he was to become. God asked him, listen to this, for his availability. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's all God asked. Yeah. Show up. Mm -hmm. Show up and I'll show out. Yeah. How cool is that? Gideon's duty was to show up. The results were God's. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? I just want to show up. Lord, you do. If it's one man there, cool. If it's a hundred, cool. God gives you vision so you can comply. Listen to this. So he can reply. Right? God gives you vision so you can comply and the Lord will reply when you make your step. Did you know, listen to this, you can have an untried, you can have untried valor inside of you right now. I'm trying. But you're sitting on it. Mm -hmm. You can have something on the inside of you that will catapult you to another level in your life but you're not using it. It's almost like a well that hasn't been tapped into. And this is what the Lord was doing with Gideon. He was tapping into him. Man, there was some valor on the inside of him. Gideon had a valor on the inside of him, but it was asleep. And I'm here this morning, friends, church, to wake it up yeah. in you. Because there's value on the inside of you, man or woman of God. And I'm here to shake you like the hamster. <laughs> and my wife said, so your eyes will pop off. <laughs> Amen? I'm shaking that up in you. Listen to this, friends. We can have untried valor living on the inside of us. We can have valor, we can have courage, we can have faith, we can have all of this on sleeping on the inside of us. And God is waiting to release it at the very act of your submission to the purpose or the vision in your life. Man, isn't that cool? 
question. How will you ever know what you can do if you don't try? Mm -hmm. How will you ever know? The Lord told Gideon, go over there. Get out from under here and go over there. If you don't ever go, you'll never know. Right? Faith is unknown until it's tried. Faith is unknown until it's tried. Great tasks, listen to this, make great men. Great trials make great believers. All it takes, friends, Brother Sylvester said it, is the faith of a mustard seed. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. Steal your excuses. <laughs> I like to steal your excuses. First Corinthians. Then we we'll get out of your way. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. For you see, you're calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, and not many mighty, and not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things yeah, that's right. of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. Think about this. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus. Who became for us wisdom from God. Righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as it is written. He who glories. Let him glory in the Lord. Well, Pastor, what do you mean you're going to steal my excuses? Well, here it is. I just told you that he uses the foolish things mm -hmm. of the world. I just told you he uses the weak things of the world. I just told you he uses the things that are not high and mighty and not highly educated and don't have a lot of money. The Bible calls them foolish things. Mm -hmm. And last time I heard my Brother Tito said, Oh, wretched man, we are. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you God uses us. Oh, wretched folks we are to confound the wise. Amen? This is why he makes it evident that as long as you are in me, listen, you've been saved, you've been sanctified, you've been redeemed, you've been made righteous, you've been justified, you are a man or woman of God, and he says because of that, I will take you, I will use you, I will set you high on a pedestal, I will do things for you you didn't think you could ever do, I will take you places you didn't think you can go, I will pull out of you things you didn't think you had, just simply because I will get some glory every time you step on the scene somewhere. It don't have nothing to do with you. Come to church in your pajamas and God will still get some glory. Because it has nothing to do with you. He says, let any man, right? Any man, look what he says, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Now, I'm going to encourage you today to have vision and have desire and have dream. But look at this. Don't get all cocky neither. Because the Bible says that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Let us stay humble before the Lord and your vision shall come to pass. Your dreams shall manifest. Everything that God has spoken over your life will come to pass because of your humility, friends. And when we can do that, I'm here to tell you, man, God will do something with you. And guess what's going to happen? They're just going to sit back and look. 
Can you believe that? <laughs> like, let me. You be like the talk of the town. God desires that we, like Gideon, who are not quite sure or who don't quite understand, trust him, have faith in him, and allow him to produce results in our lives. He is not looking for the strongest. He's not looking for the mightiest. He's not looking for the most educated or the most rich. He simply looks for those that say, I have a vision, Lord. Thank you for the revelation, Lord. Thank you. And he says, and I'll work on your behalf. The prophet Isaiah said it like this. Here I am, Lord, send me. Send me. So here it is. What has the Lord spoken to you today? Is there an area in your life that God says, this is what I want from you? This is what I want. And listen, it's baby steps. Okay? It's baby steps. You know when we started speaking at River of Life? On Wednesdays or Sundays after church, we would go. We didn't have any Sunday evening services, Pastor Vince, and we had prayer time. And we'd get all, we'd all pray for 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'd all huddle in a circle. And we'd begin to pray for each other. And Pastor Vince used to look at me and say, Brother Junior, you got something you want to share? And I went to, I went, listen friends, I went on Sunday nights, and I had something to share every Sunday. Because God had given me a vision. And guess what? It started with my little two or three minutes. Yeah, I got something to share, Pastor. And I would lay it on. Right? And I'd go home. Thank you, Lord, for them three minutes. Thank you for them five minutes. Then Pastor moved me up. Hey, Pastor moved me up. Now I'm preaching. Boom. I'm preaching every Sunday morning. I'm, I'm doing what Brother Sylvester's doing. I'm letting them have it. I'm, and, and I began to grow, friends. I began. It didn't happen. Now listen, the Lord had, had a plan for me. Right? Which to preach the gospel. Amen? Preach the gospel. Be a pastor. Be a leader. Be a friend. Be, this, this is what the Lord has for me. Now, maybe it's not for you to be a pastor. Maybe it's not for you to be a leader in the church. Maybe it's not, but maybe it's just simply for you to go and do something that you've never done before. Maybe it's asking, maybe it's asking forgiveness. Do you know, that's a whole other story. Do you know that my ministry turned around, became alive when I asked one person for forgiveness in my life? And when I asked that person for forgiveness in my life, I'm here to tell you, the Holy Ghost fell on me, I fell on that floor, and the person fell right next to me. But you know what was holding me back? You know what liberated me? An act of asking somebody, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? And sometimes we hold on to that. Or maybe it's not forgiveness. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe you got to let something go. Maybe it's someone that you got to release. Maybe it's uh, your faith. Maybe you don't have enough, uh, as much faith as you think you do. Maybe it's something that, I mean, I don't know what God is dealing with you. He deals with every one of us on different levels. Amen? But I'm going to tell you that if you will find that one thing, that one thing that is being like a roadblock from, from, from catapulting you into a, like that little picture I put, right? Jumping from the little fish boat to the bigger fish boat. If we can find that one thing that is going to demonstrate or it's going to release that next level in our lives. I'm here to tell you, you find that. I'm here to tell you, don't uh, forsake it. Do it, man. Do it. Even if it hurts. Do it. I know, I know, it's ready to go. Listen, I got one more. I got one more. I got one more. I got one more. Just listen. The Lord just remind me. And I'm going to get out of here, I promise. This is good. And when Gideon had come, listen, Gideon was scared. Right? And he told him, go fight. You know, you know the story, right? Read it. Judges 6 and 7. Gideon asked the Lord, well, do this for me. Do this. I don't believe, Lord. Show me. Do me. Do me. You ever do that? Lord, show me. Give me a sign. <laughs> right? Okay. Gideon still didn't believe this. Look what he says. 7.13. And when Gideon had come, the, the Lord told him, look, look, 
Look, Gideon, I want you to go over there. Right? Go over there. And just listen. And listen. And it's the enemy's camp. He tells them, go to the enemy's camp. I am it, not to get in. Oh, they don't like you. Go over there, man. That's a whole other message right there. He said, go over there and listen. So Gideon goes to there. And he puts his ear on the tent like that. Like that. Right? <laughs> and when Gideon had come there, there was a man telling a dream to his friend or companion. He said, I have had a dream. And to my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of the Midian. A, a loaf of bread. Imagine that tumble into the enemy's camp. Right? Look what he says. It came to a tent and it struck it so that it fell and overturned and the tent collapsed. Then his companion answered and said, This is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has delivered the Midianites and the whole camp. And so it was when Gideon heard the telling of the dream, excuse me, and its interpretation that he worshipped the Lord. He praised the Lord right there in the enemy's camp. He heard that and glory, hallelujah. <laughs> he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the, the camp of the Midianites into our hands. And here's what I'm going to leave you with. That loaf of barley was an inferior grain mm -hmm. used by the poor people. And yet, the Lord showed them people because Gideon felt, remember the very beginning, he felt inferior to everybody else. Mm -hmm. The Lord used him. Right, let's stand to our feet this morning. I'm here to tell you today, don't feel inferior against nobody. Man. When God is on your side, man. He has given you a dream. He has given you a desire. He has given you a vision. Act on it. Be like it. And if, you, and if you're scared, talk to the Lord. If you're scared, ask Him to show you. What do I do, Lord? Right? It's okay. What do I do, Lord? Moses said it in the wilderness. Lord, if you don't go with me, I won't go. You know, I'll turn around. I'll sleep here. I will not go. It's okay. The Lord does not chastise us because we seek. He says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask and I give without partiality. Yes. So I'm going to challenge you. Again, like I have been for the last four months, four weeks. Did God place a thought in your spirit today? There's something that God put in your gut this morning, hearing that word. And you say, you know what, Pastor? I'm going to act on that word. If that is you, I ain't gonna ask, I'm just ask you to raise your hand right there. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There's nothing to be afraid of. We just want to come in agreement, man. Anybody here, the Lord spoke a word to you and said, you know what? The Lord gave me a vision today. Anybody? You know, I see that hand, bro. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that in every soul here this morning, Lord, there's vision. That your word says, Lord, that your people perish for the lack of knowledge. But, Lord, Heavenly Father, today we have received, Lord, from your table, Lord. Lord, we have received today the word, Lord, that you promised us to never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. That you send us, Lord, to places we don't think we deserve to go. Or to say things that we don't deserve to say. Or to do things that we don't deserve to do, Lord. But because of you, Lord, we put our trust in you this morning, Lord. Because you have so kindly spoken to us this morning, Lord. We just give our vision to you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to help us, Lord. Lord, we ask for favor, Lord. We ask for direction, Lord. Your word says that if we lack wisdom to ask. And Lord, this morning... As pastor, Lord, I stand with our church, and I pray, Lord, give us wisdom, Lord. Give us the clarity of God, Lord. And more, Lord, more than anything, Lord, allow us, Lord, to remain humble, Lord, that the only one receiving the glory this morning is you, Lord, not me, not no one else, but simply you. That your name be glorified, be lifted up through my vision and through my dream and through my desire. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. amen.